Today we're making a frameable textile piece. Ciao dear hearts, welcome back to another Filming Friday and today you asked for this, we are going to make a frameable textile piece and um, I have not made one ahead of time, we're just going to make it on camera today and um, you know how fun that is, see, see how it turns out. Um, but for those of you who are brand new to our channel, um, my name is Katharina Giglio, all my friends call me Kat, I am a mixed media artist and my husband Don Diggison is behind that camera. and. He he um, and I started this channel about five years ago and we have over 90 videos for you to watch with technique and um, inspiring projects for you to create. So we hope you check those out. And also um, if, you, if you've been living under a rock someplace then our 2020 and 2021 schedule has been completely blown up. So if you would like to uh, support our channel there are a couple ways you can do it. The first one is to buy a piece of my art obviously go to my website um, Don's gonna put that on the screen for you and click the 142 bis um, um, gallery or 142 bis um, archive and we have free shipping in the US you can order the biggest piece and have it shipped to you okay so that's one way you can do it and then the other way in the descriptions below um, are all of our Amazon links. You could purchase one of our recommended products or just use our Amazon links and that would help us out too. But we also have a PayPal tip jar and we so appreciate all of your kind tips. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, let's start sewing. Okay, today I thought we would use some of the things that we've made from other videos. And so there are two videos that we're gonna talk about today and Don is gonna put those links in the comments so that you can, um, so you can watch the video. If you haven't watched it before, then you might want to because we're gonna incorporate some of the things we've made in other videos. It just makes sense. I have this lovely stash of dyed papers and fabrics that we just made in the uh, resist technique um, and all of the lovely black beans and, and blueberry and salted things. So I've got all of this to use and lots of wonderful um, pieces to just cut up and use for projects. So this one for sure will be in it and I decided that I was going to use uh, a larger, this large black bean piece right here as our substrate. And it's, it's got, you know, a nice uh, firm weight to it and I think it'll be great as our, as our substrate for our mixed media textile piece. So I'm going to set that one aside. So if you have a bunch of these then that's great and if not we'll put that link up so you can make all these different yummy colors. Um, and then the other video that we did a while back was, um, if you remember this, mono printing on fabric. And I have been using these for all kinds of things, for covering journals, and um, I just love cutting them up, little pieces of them. It's just, they're just fabulous and they go such a long way. Um, so you might want to create some of those too, but actually you can use, you can do anything you can use anything that you have at home. Um, it doesn't have to be this, but in case you're interested in, in looking at it and looking at the video so that you could um, create some pieces too, then we'll put those up on the comments for you. So I love this color, the brown and the blue together, and you know how I love that color combination. And, um, and so I decided that that would be um, wonderful to cut up into pieces and um, and to use in our textile. And then I also thought that this damask fabric um, that has such a lovely, I hope you can see the um, pattern in this because it's, it's so pretty. And um, so we're going to use that. You could use any other kind of cloth you have. Look at, I've got a variety of different kinds of fabrics here. Um, linen and um, cottons and muslin. So um, all these natural fabrics. And then um, some other kind of contrasting um, fabric, fabric to use um, to stitch all of our pieces in. Um, so 
One of the things that I thought was we should use ink tents because it's permanent and it would be really fun to, uh, to use. So while I love this, it's too small. We can cut that up into little pieces. Um, but I made this ink tents piece and I just, I L-O-V-E love the way it turned out. So I'm going to share with you um, how I created this. Okay, so we're going to do that right now. Okay, so I have my ink tense blocks and I have my ink tense pencils, and um, I I use the lid to do this. Um, I'm going to use the blocks first, and then what I did was I let the fabric dry, and I colored the fabric with the blue um, on dry, and then I just went over it lightly with water. So let me share with you the way I did this, and um, I wasn't. I didn't really worry too much. Um, I just used some browns and uh, just got the fabric kind of wet and then then just used the, the color um, lightly on the fabric. Now the great thing is that it isn't going to reactivate so you can let it dry and then add another color and it works really well. And uh, so I just kind of played with the color and just had some fun with it. And, um, and so, you know, give this a try and see what you think. It, uh, it, it's a wonderful way to stain the fabric. I think it's probably a little more archival than tea dyeing or coffee dyeing or anything like that. And, um, and it's just, uh, it's pretty fun to play with, um, to watercolor it. Now, you can also get your, take, take your pencils out and play with it too. And so let's see, I want to get a blue. And you can leave some of the line in there or just get a kind of watercolor effect. And that's kind of fun too. And I just left it on the tin and let it dry that way. And then I came back after it was dry. And uh, I simply used my pencil on it to create these lines like that. And I love this effect too. So you've got a lot of options to play with here. Here we are, we've got our black bean dyed. And by the way, if you're going to dye with black beans, you only need a few black beans in the water. Make sure that the very first soak, you're not gonna heat them up, it would turn into sludge. Okay, the very first soak of the beans will give you this lovely color. Just throw this in. Um, some kind of a container and just pour it in and it will just, you know, your cotty paper will just suck it up. It's just really fun. And I know many of you have already done it. So, so I thought it would be fun to do a nice contrast, put something really bright white and I love this piece and I love all the little, um, you know, trailers coming, threads, <laughs> trailers of threads coming off of the, uh, <laughs> off the paper. <laughs> And, um, and I just ignored the, the wrinkles. I don't really care about those. And then I thought this piece would be fabulous here and then we'll do something at the end. I'm not, I'm not sure what, but, but anyway, um, so we're just going to cut pieces of fabric into squares. Today we're going to talk about repetition of form. So I thought I would just cut some little squares. You could do rectangles. You could do any kind of shape you want. Um, you can do images, but repetition of form is something that artists have used forever. I mean, we, we like to repeat the form. It, it's really healthy for the eye. The eye recognizes that one shape and then, and then it, it just, the pattern is very, um, fascinating to the eye. And so I thought we would just cut a bunch of these and then put them together and come up with a, a lovely pattern. And you could use, you know, anything you wanted to, 
to use um, to do this. And this is just the uh, mono printed fabrics that I thought I would just cut a few pieces. And so I'm just going to keep cutting these pieces. And like I said, you could do triangles, you could do circles, whatever. And then we're just going to build them up and layer. I decided to uh, use paper and fabric all together. And so I cut a piece of this yummy old um, book page and just cut, you know, getting just slightly smaller and smaller pieces so that you have, you see this contrast being built up. And then we're just going to decide, you know, where we want to put these, if, how far out we want to go, how much of the cloth do you want to see? We're just going to work on the composition and see, you know, the way, what do we like? What, how do we want it to go? And, um, you know, what, what really is, are we saying in this? Um, you know, layering texture and fabric and and um, paper and color <clears throat> and giving a nice contrast, you know, is going to tell a, a lovely story. I've been playing with the composition and taking some little bits out and just um, adding them to um, to the composition. And uh, it's always so fun to do this part, this little playing around part, and checking out all the possibilities. And I don't know why, but whenever I'm creating a mixed media piece. It seems like I have to pull every single thing I have out of the closet. I'm sure you feel the same way if you do mixed media. Um, that's not going to work. It's too gray. Um, and uh, it's kind of like a crazy process. And Don will come in here and the place is just absolutely covered with stuff. And he looks at me like, ooh, his eyebrows kind of go up. He kind of backs out of the room. <laughs> no, he never does that. <laughs> Okay, I love this piece. I think I'll cut another little shred out of this. And um, and I like all the little trailers of threads. <laughs> I love that blue and brown combination. And then I also thought it would be nice to have some... Oh, what do I want? something kind of fluffy so I'm thinking about maybe um, some gauze or cheesecloth something like that oh this is yummy I could use this let's put this here we don't want the center to be you know it's we don't want it to be predictable right we want it to be interesting and um, and we want it to create interest. It's like, okay, what is this and where did that come from? Oh, B.E. loved this little tiny piece here. I think that's lovely. And I, I definitely want to incorporate some buttons, but I'm not completely done with my little bundles. And then we're gonna stitch all these together. Um, and then we're gonna have this wonderful repetition. Um, so I... Uh, I just, I love cheesecloth. Uh, cheesecloth is just so fabulous in the studio. It's just one of those things I adore. Um, and it doesn't have to be the perfect shape. You can still see through it. Um, and if you want it to be even more see-through-y, you can take those little trailing threads <laughs> right off of there. There we go. Okay, now I know we want to use buttons. This might not be enough here or here. We might have to cut a few more pieces or, you know. Like I want the little, little stacks to be nice and yummy and with lots of texture and layers. <clears throat> so, um, I know we want to do buttons. So, I went through my button stash 
and um, <laughs> decided on I wanted something really tarnished and really beautiful and so I went through them all and I thought you know this these you know, I really liked this tarnished look and I thought, you know, all of everybody has buttons. So you can use all kinds of buttons. You can get the little white ones out, those tiny little pearl buttons, whatever you want um, to help tell your story. But, um, but I liked this color and so I particularly loved these. They have like little um, bows and I, they're just so cool and so old. And so I thought, you know, I would like to you know, anchor my corners with those. And I like this one too. And this one has a Florida de lis so of course I have to use that because that tells part of my story, right? And then this one looks like a little bow too. So now we've got all the four corners. Now, if you wanted to just use one large button, um, that would be fine too. I mean, you can do whatever you want to. It's your piece, right? I'm just putting things down that I like. And if I change my mind, um, then we'll put something else on there, but we'll see. Yep, silver is definitely not gonna work. Okay, so I like this. Now we have to decide where else we're going. Now, I love the way that this looks and I'm going to just tack it down. And then if you want to, you can take a picture of it to make sure you get it back exactly the way you want it. Um, I'm just going to lift them up and set them to the side. And that way they'll just stay in place and I'll remember where they were. And I can just easily put them back. So we're gonna stitch them all down. And I am using my awl to punch holes where I want to stitch. So I have the white fabric glued with my glue stick to the cotty paper. And I have my ink tense fabric glued to the white fabric and then I'm going to stitch them down. And I'd love to use an all first. Um, it's much easier to get a good um, connection. It's easier to stitch through all the layers when you use your all. And I'm not gonna put a knot in it. You know, I'm not a knot girl. And I'm going to just hold the thread back there. I'm gonna go back in through the hole, the same hole that we started. I'm gonna pick that up and then I'm gonna go in this one. And I'm just gonna go back around. Just like this. I've started stitching my little bundles together. And uh, you will need an awl if you're going to use the fabric that we uh, mono printed because it's acrylic paint and so it's going to be very stiff. So I just used my awl and I have three different sizes in case I needed something bigger um, to 
to use and I'm just going to go ahead and put my button in here now. So I just love the look of this button. I am just stitching all of my little bundles together and I L-O-V-E love the way they, they're turning out. Um, as you can see, you can really see the wonderful um, yummy layers coming through. And of course I have the top stitched down and then um, these are all done at the top. And I had this wonderful little um, shield with a Florida Lee on it, which I love, L-O-V-E love, and it would not stitch down because my needle wouldn't go through. So these things happen, right? So I had to just go through my stash and find another button and I really love the way it mirrors this little image of the flower. So that's going to stay and that's perfect. And then I'm just going to keep stitching these and then we'll come back and recap. I have them all stitched except for the centerpiece. And I really liked this uh, when I put it all together. And then I found these pieces, these wonderful old yummy pieces. And since we had to change this button, then I thought this might look really cool here and kind of continue in with that. So these three pieces here are all kind of aligned. And I really like the way that looks. I, I love this too, and we could go that way, but, um, but we want the center to be a little bit different, right? We wanna create a little bit of interest there. So I think I'm gonna just stitch this down and uh, then we'll have all of our bundles ready. We can glue those down and then we can see about adding a finish touch to the bottom. I have everything uh, stitched down and now I'm just going to use gel matte medium with a dry brush make sure it's not wet because you're using mixing with fabric and I'm just going to glue them down now if you want to not stitch your fabric to the cotty then you could have just sewn them all the way through but um, but I chose to do it this way and part of the reason that I chose to do it this way is because um, the threads in the back I want to I want to settle those down and I like them hanging off but I also don't want them coming out so that's why I'm doing this and I want to move them over just slightly so that you can see more of the cloth background I mean what's the point in painting in painting it if you can't see it right so so I want to keep them I want to I want to make sure that we can see it and uh, and also um, I just I love the way this turned out this piece here in the center it, it still has a squarish shape but it has the round flower and it's unpredictable that's what you don't you just don't want it to somebody to look at your work and say oh my gosh that's just so predictable <laughs> so um so we've got this glued and i use two different kinds of thread um i used uh, actually upholstery thread but two different weights of upholstery thread which you know I love upholstery thread and using that in my work. Um, I like the thickness and the weight of it. Okay, so now I have this, these all glued together. And if you wanted a rougher edge on your cotty, then you know you could um, deckle the edge, you know, just feather it with water and then rip it and get a better edge. Um, and now we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do at the end. And I had a lot of different choices. I, and you actually don't even have to do anything at the end, but I just kind of liked the way this looked. And then I also love this, I love V.E. love this, because it's just completely unpredictable. And then the other piece that I really liked that's just, but this is just so me. I wanted to do something a little bit different. You know, I love an uneven look to 
my work. Um, and it's just, I think, a little too florally. So I think we're going to go with this one, actually, because that, that ties the whole color range in. And I'm just going to glue that down and, and pull this one little piece off of there. And it just kind of finishes up the composition. Well, I had fun stitching today with you and making a frameable piece. And um, a couple of tips, we're almost at chow for now, but just two more things. Um, one is I would put this in a shadow box. Um, you can go to any kind of art store, they'll have shadow boxes and you could have them mount it or you can mount it yourself. Um, I would say probably a spray adhesive or something for the back that's archival. Um, and check with them, uh, but a framer can absolutely do that um, so that it has um, space. And a framer could also frame it under a frame with glass and make sure there's a big enough space or so that all of your buttons or your pieces um, are protected. And then the last thing is when you get started um, and you get all of your stuff together, it really helps if you have every single one of your needles threaded and then it'll save you so much time. So until next time, and I think next time we're going to be doing some more mono printing. I've got a couple of ideas. We're going to experiment with those this week and see what comes up. And then I'm going to share those with you. So until then, be well, take good care of yourselves, be safe, and we send you our love. So ciao for now.